discuss the nature of bonding in the following coordination entities on the basis of valence bond theory. That is lovely. How do we do this? Let us take a look. Uh, what is the process? Because if, if you know the steps in the process of description, I think you would find this very easy. So, let me uh, you know uh, figure out or let me just list out the steps one by one. We will take two questions at a time because now, this is ferrous, this is ferric, both are pretty similar. We will start with 1 and 2. Let us begin. 1, we have Fe, oh my god. So, first we will have Fe Cn6 4 minus and at the same time the second one which says Fe F6 3 minus. How do we begin? Step 1 isolate the metal ion. So, which metal ion is there? 6 cyanide ions means minus 6. Although you have minus 6 on cyanide, the charge is only minus 4. Why? Because iron must be plus 2. So, I should have ferrous here. I have 6 F minus ions instead of minus 6, I just have minus 3. Why? Because iron must be plus 3 here. Now, ferrous, what is the electronic configuration? Argon 3D6 and ferric would be argon 3D5. Wow! So, what are the steps? Step number 1, please note very carefully what are the steps I am taking. Huh, nah? Step number 1, I have taken away <coughs> what I have done. Step number 1, I have removed this so that there is no clutter, but I just first of all I found out what is the charge on metal ion and then I wrote down electronic configuration of metal ion that ferrous. For example, in the first example I have ferrous, ferrous is argon 3D6 and in the second example I have ferric and ferric is argon 3D5, fancy. Now, what should I do? Now, I must write down the box diagram. What is all this nonsense? No, this is 3D, there is no nonsense, this is 4S and this is 4P. This is 3D, 4S and 4P, right? Something of that kind. Now, if I have electrons here, which is truly uh, nice, huh? 6 electrons, 1, 2, 3, now 4, 5, 6, how do I fill up these orbitals? Now, I must consider the field strength of the ligand. So, what did I do? First, I wrote down the metal ion and the charge correctly. Second step, I wrote down the electronic configuration. Third step, I just drew up the boxes. I did not make any very special effort. I just drew the boxes. No. Right. And then, I am now trying to fill electrons and when I am filling the electrons, I must be very careful. If I have strong field ligand like cyanide, if it is cyanide, it is strong field, so I should pair the electrons. F minus, F minus is a weak field ligand. So, usually, very often, electrons cannot be paired by F minus or even oxalate ions which are also kind of, you know, not that glamorous or powerful. We will see oxalate when we come to oxalate. First, let us stay with iron. Since cyanide is strong field and since it will cause pairing, this is what I get. Oh my God, so these orbitals are empty? Yes. And Coordination number is 6. What does this coordination number mean? It clearly means that I need 6 more orbitals to take 6 electron pairs from cyanide ions. 1 cyanide gives 1 electron pair, 6 cyanides will give 6 electron pairs. And where would these electrons stay? They will stay in D2sp3 hybrid orbitals. And they are all identical 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and they will be like this. And that makes the geometry octahedral. So, this is the nature of bonding and I have DS, D2SP3 hybridization and this is the description. What about ferric? Let us try that. Now, <clears throat> first I have 3D, 4S, 
4s, 4p, and if somebody is interested, I let me even draw 4d, 3d, 4s, 4p, and 4d orbitals. Fascinating. Now, ferric ions have d5 configuration. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is the lovely D5 configuration very much. What is the power of fluoride ions? There is no power of fluoride ions. So can fluoride ions pair? They can't pair. If they can't pair, then as lone pairs attack, ting -tang, ting -tang, ting -tang, ting -tang, they are coming towards ferric. Oh, ferric ions is very casual. They are very casual. They say, ah, go and sit outside. Don't come in. Oh, that is an insult. Okay, let it be. But if you are coming, then sit outside. Don't get in. Fine. Now, ferric ions being lalu, they can't help it. And you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You have sp3, d2 hybridization. This is now an outer orbital complex. Why? Because outer orbitals are being used, while the previous one was inner orbital. This is inner orbital. This is outer orbital complex. Then in this case because there is pairing this is called low spin and in this case there is no pairing so this is called high spin. Oh wow that's it that's it. Have you finished the description? This is the valence bond theory description of two complexes. And what about the other two? Let's take a look at the other two. You have tris oxalato cobaltate 3 and Tris, sorry, hexa fluorido cobaltate 3 ion. These are also very beautiful ones. How? Let's take a look. In both 3 and 4, I have actually cobalt plus 3 cation, both of them. And cobalt 3 is argon 3d6. It is argon 3d6. Are you aware that? As you move across the periodic table from left to right, the tendency to become low spin increases. So cobaltic is, you know, very keen to become low spin. But fluoride is so stupid. And this is such a lalu, you know, very weak field ligand that fluoride, although cobaltic is dying to pair up, fluoride ion cannot cause any pairing. And because of that, if you look at the configuration, three D, four S, four P and four D, you would discover cobaltic, which is three D six, one, two, three, four, five, six, like this. F minus cannot cause pairing. Since they can't cause pairing, you find that outer orbitals are being used. It is sp3 D2 hybridization, outer orbital complex, and this is high spin outer orbital this shortcut I'm using and high spin. Is that fine? Uh, geometry of course continues as octahedral for all hexacordate complexes that is nothing new and that is not a part of valence bond theory also. What about this one? Just take a look. Now oxalate honestly speaking is not a very strong field ligand as such. Oxygen donors are not that great, but first of all, it is a chelating bidentate ligand. And secondly, cobaltic is so keen, so keen to undergo pairing that actually it becomes a low spin complex. So, what happens? You have D6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, they pair up. And the moment they pair up, uh, I'm sorry, this I need to redraw a little. The, it has to be a bigger circle, yeah. So I get D2 sp3 hybridization. Wow, so this is inner orbital, yes, this is inner orbital, and this is a low spin complex. Fascinating. This is being described, yes. So 1 and 3 are inner orbital and low spin complexes, 2 and 4 are higher orbital and high spin complexes. This is the valence bond description of each of these complexes.